In this class, you are going to look at designing billboards and you are going to start with 10 tips for effective billboard design. We have our live participants here. So if you see me look here, because I'm interacting with our live participants. So let's start off with 10 tips for effective billboard design. The first tip is keep the message short. Now, this is very, very key. Why? Because the average amount of time spent reading a billboard is six seconds. So whenever you've been given a task to design a billboard, you have to have this in mind that the message has to be short. Now, I understand that most of the times is the client that brings the copy. So if this is the case you have to make the client aware that the message is probably too long it has to keep the message too short and this will make you more valuable apart from that if the client has already given you a copy for the ad for the billboard this is how i look at it keeping the message short also means that you highlighting only the vital parts of the billboard i'm going to show you some example but let's say you've been asked to design a billboard with eight words out of the eight ways, which one of them is the most important? So that when the person is driving by, because the person has just six seconds to just read the billboard. So how are you going to deliver that message? So you hook the person first with the, the very important words. So that is where typographic hierarchy comes in. So looking at this billboard, for example, the message is straight to the point, pimple, clean pause, fight pimples and this billboard design is very creative why because of the use of novelty like it, it, it use a human face so it makes you want to look and once you look the message is straight to the point pimples so you can see the use of space to drive attention to the word pimples and the use of clean typography here so anytime you are doing a billboard design have this in mind that the message should be short and you have to pay attention to a lot of high space and a lot of clean typography. The second tip is seven words or fewer. Now, the second, this second tip has a lot in common with the first one. Why? Because considering people are usually on the move when they read billboards, you have to make the words seven or fewer. So have this in mind. Less is more when it comes to billboard design. So let's look at this example here see the designer use just one two three four like make your room cool and just the logos so seven words or less is more effective when you are designing a billboard so with this understanding with this knowledge anytime you're working with the clients and the clients wants to put all the flyer all his flyer all his brochure on the billboard you have to educate the clients that based on research or based on what works it will cost you more to put all these words on the billboard and you can make more if you use fewer words because few words will drive your message home for the viewer so this is a very nice example the use of contrast make your room there's a contrast in color there and the way the cool is a visual effect of ice block that is also a very nice trick that the designer here did and i will encourage you to use fewer ways when you are designing billboards the third tip is be smart but not clever now this is very key why because as a rule you don't want your billboard design to make people scratch their head and wonder what's going on you never want to do that again people have just six seconds so you have to make sure that whatever design whatever concept you are presenting is straight to the point that when once the person looks at it the person should get oh wow i get it i know what this means so let's look at some example this i saw on dribble and look at a warm welcome to death and he used a cigarette a man and see the use of contrast he made a cigarette very big and the man very small walking into the cigarette you see this design is smart but not too clever this is another example all you can eat rest stop so whilst you enter this the next stop is their shop it's so creative and it's smart but not too clever 
once you look at it oh you can get it and it makes the person kind of feel something you once you are driving through this we you feel like you are entering into somebody's mouth and it's it makes you feel something that is a very very creative idea so when they design a billboard this boundary should be set and it will help you get ideas that your clients will love the next tip is you tell a story now storytelling is very very key in design why because human beings are terrible at remembering facts but great at remembering stories now if you don't know how to tell st stories there are a lot of courses online i will leave a link in the description i also have a course on how to tell a story using your design you can check out that now why do you have to tell a story because as humans we are emotional human beings so you want to use people's emotion to hook them let's look at this example this is a, a billboard for a product that's kind of a pimples and aches so see the use of the man the story is the man wants to come and propose to the a woman but because the man has a lot of pimples the woman is run away <laughs> you see and this is a nice of storytelling but one particular reason why i like this is the use of contrast like see the the huge the, the human face like it's big and he makes the people very small and i feel this is a very nice use of story in design so tell a story with your billboard design and people will get hooked the fifth tip is be loud being loud means that you make sure any text in your design is printed in clean and bold fonts to ensure the best readability also the larger the fonts the more time a driver has to read and understand your message at a distance so go big this advice is or this tip it looks straightforward it seems straightforward but believe me having that at the back of your mind is going to help you a lot now going big in design works in some few contests for example looking at our previous design like this 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 text is not that big but the use of high space makes it work here you get it so if you are not going big you have to introduce more high space in your design to make the design breathe and that is going to make people just they don't have any option but to look at just that text on the billboard so let me show you an example of going big so going big look at this design see how it's loud the use of the imagery is stretched the typography is bolding is big even the use of this very element the url a rectangle has to be added on it just to push it forward to make it pop so this is some examples of going big going big in typography going big in image use of imagery even use of urls like that that's, that's a call to action you add a shape under just to make it pop so that is an example of going big the sixth tip for effective billboard design is being colorful you have to be make your design very colorful why because you want your design to be catchy you want to you want it to pop remember people have less than six seconds to just look at your billboard and say i like it or i don't like it so use bright colors or bold image in your design to effortlessly attract eyes to your designs or to your billboard so one tip is contrasting colors within the design will also create an even bigger impact that will help improve the retention of your message so let me show you this example i personally did it for a client and this is an example of how the client first of all said he wants a colorful design a colorful billboard and he wants it to be playful so once i looked at the product i realized that okay so i could actually use the product to come up with a concept because the product itself is colorful and i always say that design is expressing the life of a thing so looking at this billboard i made the design colorful so that is why the clients loved it and that is why this design will be effective when it's on the high street the seventh tip is you keep your background simple but in order for your 
image to be effective, you want to keep your background simple to ensure the foreground isn't fighting for attention. So the background has to be simple. This, looking at the background, it's just a gray background. The face of the human has been used as a texture. So that's a simple background. This is a simple white background. This is a simple background. So keeping your background simple is also one effective way. And I'm going to use the same example of the, the global that design for the client. I just use one simple background and this makes the design works. I, I could have used some textures or a cloud background, but no, made it very simple. Just one solid background. The eighth tip for effective billboard design is using visual metaphor. So what is visual metaphor? Visual metaphor is bridging the gap between the new and the familiar. These types of images incorporate familiar elements, concepts or objects, and then use them to build on the viewer's previous knowledge. So basically it's using familiar elements and concepts, things you already know, or things you know that your audience already know and you using them to build a new concept. So these are some examples. Once you look at this billboard, it says unofficial service can be dangerous. So looking at how he used the plier and you can see the ghosted image of a crocodile or whatever you call it. So it makes, the concept is there. He uses two things. One is a crocodile and a plier just to send a message which i feel is very important and here's another example on a unofficial service can be dangerous so you see this is on point so this is what i mean by visual metaphor using what the person already knows that is somebody committing suicide with a rope and these two just to drive home a message so use use visual metaphors in your billboard and this happens normally when you are in the idea stage of your creative process in this idea stage you always want to play with some of these things it will not always work especially depending on the message and how you want your message to be received so the ninth tip that you always want to use for effective billboard design is the use of visual simile now this is another way to catch your audience attention with a visual simile although this one this very trick is similar to visual metaphor in that it makes connection between two sometimes unrelated things the visual simile presents an object so that it looks like something else so the visual simile is more like the visual metaphor so looking at this design this billboard design for this is a car company see the message the new beetle this is i don't know it's a jeans or a bag but it's been laid down to make it look like a road so they want to just send a message and the use of visual simile by putting just some fabric there and making it look like it's a rough road or a road why do you think a car company will use this as a billboard just to make a connection so using visual simile can also help you design effective billboards so the tenth tip for effective robot design is to use a lot of high space and we've already talked about that that looking at all this design the reason why it's very effective is because there's a lot of high space around so these are all high space it allows the concept to be strong it allows people to breathe all these designs that i showed to you has a lot of high space this although it doesn't have much white space but the message is clear this there's also some high space here. This has a lot of high space. So use a lot of high space in your billboard because people have only six seconds to get your message. So that is all for the 10 tips for effective billboard design. So while I was doing the research on the clients, that's the client's business, the client's website, sometimes I'll go to the client's social media page, but in this case, they didn't really have a social media pages. It's just a shop sometimes by looking at reviews i get words that's just keywords like fun colorful the client already mentioned all those keywords 
So I use this as verbal direction. So there's verbal direction and there's also visual direction. So here the verbal direction was fun, colorful, eye-catching. So these are the verbal directions. So I use this verbal direction to get visual direction. So how did I get the visual direction? I got the visual direction by gathering visual reference. So with the verbal direction, like I realized that, okay, so we needed, I looked at one of the keywords was pop bar. So pop bar was one keyword that was in my verbal direction. So I came here to Google image search and I was just searching the product. I was just searching, I was just searching, I was just searching. I also looked at, so previously my concept, my idea was to present the product like, let me, there is, a, in the project files, you will find a folder called visual reference. And in that, you will see some of the visual reference actually gathered. So I, I, I gathered this visual reference when I was searching for like the smoke, yeah, the smoke vaporizer in that same category. I said, okay, this is nice. You see the way the product is presented on a nice flat disc. I got this by searching for the product name, by searching for looking at this one too. I searched for colorful. So I got this design, which was very colorful. Okay, I, I thought myself, let me put this. I, I might also go in this direction. So this all came as a result of my verbal direction. So these are all visual reference that I've gathered. So this is also an example. I added this to the visual reference because of the use of reflection, how the product has been reflected. You can do that easily in Photoshop just to give it that look and feel. I also looked at this and this also caught my attention. This was actually one of the directions I wanted to go, but the layout didn't work for me because the products in this case had different flavors. So I could also have gone this direction. The layout didn't work for me. So I ended up not going this direction. So in my research stage, I was roaming on inspiration sites, Google, and I kind of saw this image. Now, when I saw this image, I stopped. I said, okay, this is the second time I'm seeing this image on the review site and over here. So what if? So that's the question. Anytime you are gathering virtual reference, ask what if? What if the product is placed like this to give you that kind of perspective look? So based on this specific reference, I got my concept. So now I want to read a, a quote to you. And this is very profound. The idea and concept of a design are the most expensive part of it. So I always find them before designing. A great design is a combination of idea and execution. So now we found we found the idea, which is the most expensive part, which is the most difficult part. Also, a combination of client's need, style, and requirements with design principle, timing, and recent design style. So that is kind of how design process fits together. Now, this is just by the way, I also want to mention that when you are finding the idea, like in this phase of research, make sure you don't have any distraction. Make sure you are in your flow state. You are focused. Put your phone on silence. If you have classical music play, once you find your idea, you can do anything else. You can play music, you can do. Because in the idea stage, your brain is working at 120 your brain should be working at 100 normally my brain is working at 120 percent speed i'm trying to connect the dots because design and great concepts is all about connecting dots so you can see how looking at this image i connected it to the design like connecting dots so in this phase of your design process you are trying to connect different ideas put them together to form one design so that is the visual direction i got my visual direction based on the images visual friends i decided that i'm going to go with that particular image this direction was the one i wanted to go with so based on that I sketch the concept because you have to sketch the concept. So I actually sketch the concept. So this is kind of a rough, rough sketch that I did. I want to say that 
the sketch is important but it's not too important so don't waste too much time like you want it to be perfect and a lot of people when they hear graphic design they think graphic design is just drawing no there's more to it in this case you can see that this drawing or this sketch is not that like perfect but it's just something for me to know that okay this is the direction i want to go so i put it by my my my, my computer and whilst i'm designing i'll just look at it to know that i'm going in the right direction so with all this said i'm going to show you how i did the design actual the actual designing in photoshop coming up soon so we're going to start our design by setting up our document i would like to mention that if you are new to photoshop i have already made a photoshop beginner basics video so check that out so we're going to start our design by going to far new and this client said he wants the billboard to be the width to be 320 and the height to be 160. Now, in working in Photoshop for designs like this for billboard, what I recommend normally the print requirement is normally above 150 dpi for sharper prints. But in Photoshop, unless you have a terabyte of solid state drive or a terabyte of hard drive space on your drive c or on your main drive you you will never want to enter 300 let me just demonstrate to you let's say i want the design to be very sharp at the print stage so just in beginning i set the resolution to 300 with this size and i you let's forget about everything the focus is on the 300 and i create a new document now just by entering the 300 look at the size of the document 12.9 gig which is crazy so you never want to do this it's going to slow down your machine not just slow down your machine it's going to make your hard drive four 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 you never want to do this so we're going to cancel out with Control w or just click here to just cancel out so we're going to do it again Control n to create a new document and the same size i'm going to make it 30 dpi that's three three zero why even with this size after we export it for web we just show it to the client that okay do you like it so after the client has approved the design then we work on converting it to that higher resolution because if we work on 300 dpi or 150 dpi now it's going to make our design very big especially when you bring in the images so you never want to do this at this stage and also the color mode should be set to cmyk but this is my personal choice i don't normally design like when i'm working on a print project from the start i don't normally do it here case because i always do that the, that's the last thing i do before i send it to the printer why because i'll always be sending the work to the client for feedback and i don't want the client to be looking at a cmyk design on an rgb screen because the client will always use his phone or his or her phone or computer screen which is an rgb screen you never want to do that so i always go with rgb because of the version of Photoshop i'm using i have art board i'll check i'll name this robot and create so now this is the size and you can see the difference now is 131.8 megabytes this is workable so the first thing i do i will zoom out and in my project files in the project files i have some visual reference here which the first thing i normally bring in is i bring in the inspiration the direction i want to go i'll bring it in and because i'm using art balls i can actually put that here i also bring in my sketch now my sketch normally is by my computer so not always but for the purpose of this class let's just bring it in and the next thing i bring in is any file that i think will be relevant so in this case i'll bring in the logo because out of the logo we are going to sample the colors and whole lot of so i'll bring in the logo to just put it and i'll create like some rectangles or some square here just to sample the colors so double click and sample the colors you can see that i'm going a little bit fast because i have already made videos on how to use these tools so if you are new to photoshop check that out and come back and watch this video now i sample the first color i'll click and also sample this second color i have the base for starting my design i have the sketch here so 
the document is set up so the next stage is we, i'm going to create the layouts of the page so the reason why we brought the sketch here is just so that we can get a layout so now this this is the sketch i made so basically a billboard should be simple so the layout okay i have my touch enabled so that's why so the layout is is going to be something like this you get it it's going to be something like this now anytime i'm teaching design like this i don't normally give you like so let the shape tool and double click and enter this amount of value that is not what is important here what is important here is the process and mindset so i want you to pay attention to that this i have made videos on that so you can just check them out so after bringing this in i knew that the logo has to come here so basically this is going to be the layout of the page there's going to be products here and there's going to be some logos here based on like what we see here so the next thing we'll do is we bring in the logos so remember the client said he wanted the logos to be you always want to work with the vision of your client you don't want to do what you think works best for you you want to always listen to the client's request so the first logo we will bring in is this logo i'll hold the alt key and drag it and put it here so after putting it here let me zoom in a bit with control plus let's make the background black because on the client's website they are they have they use a black background on this logo just for contrast now their logo is a normal text hemzy i just need to make sure that i have the spelling right let me check on their website so it's just a normal text so with this i think we have the spelling right and i'll duplicate it and add a smoke shop now the reason why i'm doing it this way is again when you are doing a billboard design one thing you never want to do is to make everything look like the same and the same applies to the logo so with this I'll, i brought this here and i'll increase the tracking to like 400 so there are two levels of contrast contrast in size and contrast in space in the ty typographic star so by using the transform control let me just make this 400 close it a bit and and now i don't know whether i can see that i am actually making it the same weight so by bringing out the rulers to control r to bring out the rulers and if you drag the ruler here and here you can actually see so with this i, I want to bring put this here to make sure that it is the same weight as this so I'll, I'll control it now there, there are also some few things that i we have to fix looking at this the tracking the y and the z looks together so we can we can control the tracking there so by putting your mouse in there if you hold the alt key and you you press the forward arrow key you can actually control the tracking to make sure that everything looks quite the same so with this done with this done we have to also customize this so with the logo done like the client's logo done what you do is we will group it and i'll call it logo now why did i do the logo this way the client they don't have a very specific logo that we can just put it there every client is different some most clients they have their logo already made so you don't have the chance to customize the layout and do a lot of it so with this one i just had to make it better so this is this was the better version of their logo for the clients so next is the pop logo so with the pop logo if you go into the project first i have it so with that you can drag it and put it into photoshop like this it looks too small so just make sure you so i brought that to here make sure that it's not it's in the right folder i have added all the projects files for this but bear in mind that this is a grow client project so the the goal or the purpose of this teaching is just to show you how i came up with the concept so i'm not giving you all the files i'm just giving you some of them just to practice what i'm teaching you here there are some that i'll put some other images there for you to work along with me so with this with the color overlay i'll make the color white so this is the puff logo 
Now, this is the POF logo, but the POF logo should be POF bar, not POF depot. So to do that, this came in as a smart object. So we're actually going to open the smart object by double clicking on it. And now we want to remove the dep depot. So we use the marker to, to drag around these and just delete this, making sure we have our layer selected and delete, press the delete key to delete this and use the same marker tool to drag around this. Press X, Control X to switch, Control V to paste. Now we can put this in the middle. Why? How do I know this? This is how it looks on the product. So with this, we have to actually select both and press Control E to merge, Control E to merge and press Control S to save. And now once you see because a smart object, all we have to do is just to close it and it will be saved. Now, the next is the pop logo. Now, removing the pop logo was a little bit challenging because I looked online and I didn't really find the actual logo. So what I did was I brought this image into Photoshop, which it is not coming because they, they say the image is not the right kind of image. But looking at this image, it's sharp enough so I can remove the pop part of it so what i did was first i took a screenshot with windows i'm using a windows pc so windows print screen if you're using a mac you should know that normally on windows is on the recent folder so what i did was i opened that in photoshop open with photoshop and all i need is just this part so i'm going to crop this part with a market tool and press c key to activate the crop tool press enter twice to just crop that part now all i need is just this part just this part of the image so to, to crop this part i use the lasso tool and i make a lasso around this no, i actually made a mistake so this requires some fullness and time so just be patient just take time let me zoom out this should be easy for me because I'm actually using a graphics tablet. And if you're using a mouse too, it's, it's going to be easy for you. So I actually selected this part. So once I had this part selected, I press Ctrl J to copy it on a, a, another background. Now I can turn this off. Then right click this on the crop layer and convert to smart objects now when you open the smart object we now have this image here which we want to just crop out the logo so to crop out the logo we will just use the select and color range to make sure we have your layer you have your layer selected and go to select color range and select this color you can play with the fuzziness now selecting this color it's, it's kind of selecting a lot of these colors too. So play with the fuzziness to make sure that you have just these two selected. Now, once you have that, you can just delete it. Once you have it cropped, we also want to make sure that this is, the color is, is white. So everything here should be white. Whether or not it will show on a black background, that is the case. So. To fix that, we will let just first of all convert this into a smart object, then bring it into our working documents like this and zoom it in. And let's put it here. So by putting it here, we can see that we have to also remove the white part of this to for it to work. So we just open a smart object again and let's zoom into control plus and use the select color range and let's just select the white part of this okay and then delete the white part of this too so now if we save it to control s and control w to close this if we add a color overlay which is a white overlay to this that now the logo now becomes white so that is how i was able to get this the company's logo on this billboard so now we have the two companies logo here so basically that is all for bringing in the the logos in the folder so let's look at adding the first product which is the pop bar so in the project files i have the pop bar image here you can open it with photoshop now once you have this image open you can see that i've already done it let me just undo it and to remove the background of this is simple just select the selection tool then make sure the product is selected then instead of selecting the product let's select the, the height background which is quite simple if this is new to you 
you watch my Photoshop basics lecture or course which will introduce you to these kind of tools. So with this, we will have to just invest it or we just delete the background. Then we convert this into smart object. Now we're going to bring this into our working document by dragging it over your mouse over this section and dropping it here. Now in working on this project, let me zoom it, let me maximize the size a bit. In working on this project, what I did was I literally brought this image here to make sure that I have the angles right. There's also another way I could have done it. I could have just used lines like lines or a pen tool to just get the angles right and that that would that would have been it but i uh, because this was my inspiration i wanted to use this so i put this beneath everything and by using the show transform control by increasing the size and hovering your mouse over the edge you can rotate it like this and just push it here rotate it like this and just push it here so by doing this, pressing the enter, we have the same angle, the same size, making sure that the size is not too big. So with this done, we are going to bring in the second image, follow the same process, open with Photoshop, use the quick selection tool, which is over here, select the background. Now over here, this is white, so it's actually selecting it. So I'll use the Alt key and subtract this from the selection. So with the background selected, I'll press the Delete key. Now I have to unlock the background. So just press the Delete key to delete the background. Right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. Then do the same thing, bring it here. So with this, I'll Make it big, hover mouse over the edge, then also push this here. Now you can see right here that this looks a bit different. I'll later on show you how I went in and tweak. So I'm going to cancel all these layers to give me enough room in my layers panel to bring in the rest of the images. So back into the project first. Bring this in, right click, open the Photoshop. Let's remove the background. Quick selection tool. Select the background. I have to subtract this from the background and just press the delete key to delete, control D to deselect, convert to smart objects and press the V to activate the move tool and just bring it into like this, Photoshop like this. So over here, I'm, I just want to bring this here, rotate it and put it here. Make it a little bit bigger like this. So we're going to bring in the next image, which is this, and right click and choose open width. Basically, we will also remove the background of this and delete the background. Control D to D select, right click, convert to smart object. And we and I want to, want to mention that obviously the reason why we are converting to smart object is because we want to prevent the image from pixelation. So we always want to convert our layers to smart objects to prevent pixelation. So with this done, with this done, what we can do is now at this point, I don't think we need the let's add one one last product and we will figure the rest out. So which products haven't we added? So I think it's this, we have not added this very product. So we can also add this. And with this, the same, unlock the background, make sure you select the pre-selection tool. And with that, you select the products, the background, you press the delete key to delete the background, right click and choose convert to smart object.
with a VK, you activate a move tool, then you just bring the work into our working document, control it like this. So for now, we're going to keep it like this, but we will customize it as next. You are going to bring in the pop product. We are not just going to do the pop. We are going to do the pop. So with the pop, you bring this one in first. Right click, open with Photoshop. Then we're going to remove the background. Now I would like to mention that actually the way this pro project actually ended was that the client had to take original photographs because obviously these images are web images it looks too small if we are to print this billboard is going to obviously look pixelated looking at this, the resolution of it it's not going to work for print it's going to just be for web and social media but before they printed it, we had to actually get a high res version of the product photographs. So I, I replaced them with the original design that I did. Just delete this. And the same way, convert it to smart, smart object. And I bring, I'll bring this into the working documents. Now, this part was a little bit tricky because when I got to this part, I was asking myself, now, how big is the, these two products? Because I had to make sure that I present this in the right context. So what I did was I went to YouTube and I searched for pop eyes. I'm talking about that product. I searched for the review. So by going to the video, I searched for the review. So by looking at the review, I was able to see how big the product is, how big the product is. And this guy holding the this product and this product i got a sense of how big the, the other product was because having that context helped me kind of know how big so I, I realized that they are almost the same sizes so with this in mind i actually got a size so i'll just clean around with the layout let me just turn this off at this point we don't need it before we do everything let's make sure we select all these layers i'm going to select all these layers and i'm going to bring them down making sure that they are beneath the, the, the black shape let me make sure that this is on top of all these layers all right so with this done we can actually customize this push this tweak it make sure the angles are right so in designs like this a lot of finesses you by now should know how to use the tools my goal here is to show you kind of the process you will learn one or two tricks by watching me work on this so by doing this project i realized that i had to make sure that the spacings of the products are even if not even they're almost the same and the angles it looks interesting it looks realistic so let's bring in this one to right click and the same process so i'm going to add all these products without talking so one key point over here is we have to make sure that the size of these products are the same you don't have to make one big bigger than the other because we want to make we want to maintain a consistent look and feel to the of the same of all the products so that's one thing you have to pay attention to
one thing with designs like this is you have to play with it you have to work finesse it so you see it work so that is what i'm doing currently as you see me finessing it but make sure as i've always said that make sure that the size of the product are maintained like the same size but the angles the perspective should be the same so just to save time what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in the final artwork before that i'll save my work and start billboard and i'm going to bring the final artwork just to save time because this is a live recording and we don't want it to be very long so to save time we'll just bring in So if you are working along with me, you have this image in the project files, just bring it into your design. The, the position of the product doesn't have to be the same, but the angles has to be the same. So use that. So for example, this, there is this orange product here, but the position does not have to be the same. This one is purple. So this has to come here. So I actually achieved this result by spending some time finessing the design till I got that final design you saw previously. So that should tell you that this, to get a concept like this right, getting a concept is one thing, but executing the concept is also a whole, ball, a whole different game. So have that in mind too. So next I brought this here. Now over here to the same. I brought this here. As I said, the product placement can change, but the angles should be maintained. So that is all. So this part too, like this. So what I did next is that there's also one, there are also two images that has to come here. So I'm going to bring in the mango. Also remove the background of this with the crystallization tool yes it is done let me zoom in hold the alt key to subtract this section If you see you are struggling removing the background, you have to use the right bracket key to increase the brush size or decrease the brush size to make it smaller to be able to remove the background. I also want to mention here that the reason why we want to keep the size of the products the same is because of consistency in design. Consistency, you have to make sure that the products or the design, the content you are presenting, it looks consistent. So you don't want one product to be very big and another, the other one, the same product to be very small. So that should tell you how consistency is very key in design so i'm going to bring in take the strawberry 
flavor of the pop. So remove the background. Hold the alt key to yes, and I would press the D key to the press the delete key to delete the background. Let's bring it into our working documents here. So one thing to keep in mind is that we don't want two yellows to kind of be close together. So we actually have to bring this yellow over here. But before then, let me make sure that the sizes are the same for consistency. The size has to be the same. Okay, so the size are the same. So we're going to rotate this. Before that, let's bring this here. We will bring this here. We rotate this this way. So at this point, we have most of our product in. So the next phase of our design process is to give the background a color. And I would like to mention here that my first color option for the client was not this color you see here which is the pink color my first color option was yellow and for a specific reason so what i did was i sampled this yellow because yellow is a very colorful again colorful color bright so i used a yellow like this a little bright saturated yellow then what i did was i added a texture to it to give it that kind of realism so if you look at the project part i have this texture green texture so open it right click open with photoshop then we're going to bring this into our working documents that's on top of the background we just created so something like this now you see how it looks now Let's convert it to smart update. Now, let's rotate it with a transform tool and make it bigger. Now, this is kind of one approach. You can also do it this way, duplicate it several times. So now converting your color to the CMYK, see what happens. Now, the color has been changed and I know why. The reason being that the adjustment layers of the hue and saturation does not work in the CMYK space. So before you convert it into CMYK, let's undo Ctrl or Z to go back. So with that adjustment layer part, so with this one, like the price, we have to actually convert it to smart object to protect that adjustment layer. And again, with the background to we have to also convert this into smart objects to protect that because the CMYK conversion does not see the adjustment layers we've put into the smart objects. So now that we have this done, we can go back and convert it into CMYK again. And let's hope it doesn't change the color again. So it's going to go through the same process and let's see. All right. So the design has been converted to CMYK now. We have, we have the design now. So with this, there are two options one is if you have a lot of space on your machine do this if you don't have a lot of space you're going to use illustrator but the illustrator part i'll share with you in another project how to convert your work from photoshop into illustrator for print but for now let's do the photoshop way the photoshop way is you go to image image size now this is the size making sure that the size is the same as the client size for now we can see that there's a little of inches which we can easily remove by coming to image canvas size and making sure that we delete this we delete this make sure you don't have relative check then you press ok so it's, it's it's going to say that it's going to make the image smaller but make sure you don't have relative check it's going to make the image the same size if i come to image image size you can see that now it's the same size as 
okay it's actually supposed to be 160 not 162 so we come here again canvas size and make this the height 160 and now this is not going to affect the the distortion of the image so with this done we come to image image size and the resolution most printers accept 100 resolution 100 percent so 100 this is going to make the file very big like 12 gig so i'm not going to click ok in the scenario where you are working on a project like that you have to be patient with your pc or your computer if you don't have a very heavy pc i will not recommend you change the resolution to a higher resolution you probably send it to the printer but make sure that your images are very sharp so that once they scale the image we have the same sharpness so that the prints the printing will be very sharp that is all for this very class how to design a billboard i hope you've learned a lot and let me know in the comments if you have any challenge or any question until next time i'll see you again bye so by doing it this way what i realize is that it, it helps because you, you we don't want the texture to show much so duplicate it several times but make sure it is not showing so by make zooming and make sure that pattern is not really showing that much so we're going to merge this control e to merge and we play with the layer blending mode so over here we start with darken and multiply so i think i'll go with the darken zoom in a bit and i'll lower the opacity of it now what i look i was going for was the green the green look like give it that wood green texture or kind of a foamy texture so i actually lowered it to say 10 percent it's barely there you can see it but you cannot really see it so the next step of our design process is we add the drop shadow to the product to add a little bit of realism so what i did was i added a drop shadow to the first product which is this so by connecting that product i went to apex drop shadow then with a drop shadow i went for a dark drop shadow like a black you want to first of all determine your light source so if your light source is coming from here the other products will have the same drop shadow so what i would normally tell you in this case is you play you play with it to see the shadow the principle here is that the shadow that it has become too harsh if the shadow is too harsh it's going to make your design clumsy and with with the drop shadow star layer star open you can actually drag the shadow to see which parts you want the light source to be so but i want the light source to come from this section so that is how i want it i'll lower the drop shadow opacity is barely there that's what i want so with this i have the product here i'll hold the alt key with the fx and drag this on all of the other products so you can see that it's being added on all these products now with this project my goal is not to kind of walk you through everything my goal is to just give you an idea of how i came up with the concept so there is a lot to this than you see why because this sometimes i went back i finesse it so you have to take time when you're designing play around with it play with different concepts so even with a drop shadow i didn't just settle on one drop shadow that, okay this is the final drop shadow i sat back and looked at this for some few a few minutes and say okay does this work if it doesn't work i change it one of the things i realized was that okay it was too harsh at the beginning so i realized i had to lower the opacity to bring everything down because you don't want your drop shadow to be too over there it has to be subtle like it doesn't have to show too much on the product and one trick i also did over here is that you can also vary the drop shadow because say if your light source is coming from here the shadow that the light cast on the product here will not be the same as the shadow that 
that the the light cuts on the products here so you can also buy your drop sh drop shadow to kind of add some interest to your design so that is the cheap tip i can give over there so once i did this my design was pretty much done except for one thing i had to play with the background because i wasn't really happy with the background so i duplicated it first and with the alt and the drag so because i have artboard so with this in playing with the background because i had yellow all i did was i used the adjustment layer here and saturation then i just played with the background so i can go for orange like this increase the brightness one the, the design to be bright so i played with the background this background is also not bad i played with the background so you can also do your own version play with the background make the design pop make the design bright make sure that the background is not overshadowing the product so that is how i came up i came about with the pink background you see on the final design which is somewhere here yeah so somewhere around this side is where i got a pink background you see over here now i intentionally made it light because i didn't want the background to overshadow the product i didn't want the background to overshadow the product so in making it white i went into the hue and saturation and i added some light to it just to make it light to make make sure that the background is no overshadowing the image so the last thing i did was basically i went in and i finesse it which you should be able to do by then by this so i hope by this time you've been able to get an idea of how i came up with this concept one last thing i did which you can barely see if you look at the, the product i added a ghosted image of the logo at the background here just for uh kind of to add the dna of the brand to the billboard so with this i duplicated the logo and obviously i made it very big like this making sure that it's actually on top of this black shape i clipped it to this made it very big again by using the shift and the alt transform control then just lower the opacity to like seven so it's 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 there but you can barely see it so that was what i was going for so we 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 come to almost the end of this very project i'm going to show you one last thing after making the trick with the clients and everything we obviously change some of the images but the purpose of this class is to show you how i came up with the concept and the, the thought process and how i use the tools i hope this class has been helpful to you so after doing this see the size of this even at 30 dpi it's almost one gig so what i always do in this case is that to prepare this work for prints what i do is one i select the first layer in, th in terms of the hierarchy then i draw a rectangle on top of this like i have i'm doing right now so with this done making sure the rectangle is the same size as our artboard and i select the rectangle with the rectangle selected, I scroll down to the last part one layer, last layer, and I hold the shift key and I select the last layer. Then I convert everything into a smart object. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to open the whole composition in the smart object. I'll show you later on. So over here, if your machine is not very fast, you have to wait. So once it's done converting the smart object, I open it in the smart object because you can't present your work for print in the artboard. Why? Because most printing companies they don't use the artboard version of Photoshop; they use the just the document version of Photoshop. So we want to make sure that our work is in just one single document, not not the artboard version of Photoshop. So once we have it open, let me zoom in to make sure that the size is actually. So over here, I will come and make sure that the size is the same. Zoom in. So over here, the size, make sure that it's the same. Now, once we have the size the same, I hold the control key and click in this square thumbnail to make a marker around it. Then I'll use the crop tool, press C for crop tool, then press enter. And this, if you don't have a lot of space on your 
machine is also going to affect the speed or it's going to tell you that your scratch this is full because this takes a lot of scratch this now we have the documents here now the next thing i do is i go to image mode and i change the image the mode to cmyk photoshop is going to tell me do i want to change or discuss some adjustment layers and also merge i'll tell them okay but never merge it rest right don't rest right make sure that you have this check and it's going to convert your colors into cmyk don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like and share this video if you find this content valuable and thank you so much for doing that in advance i'll see you guys bye